This is a 2019 Toyota Highlander. I'm gonna give you 10 things that you need to know after driving this SUV for the last five days, starting right now. informative opinionated reviews of car trucks and SUVs check out my channel car Mike new reviews and videos every Monday so number 10 is often talked about with this SUV which is it's just right size it's easy enough to park in most parking spots it doesn't feel huge it doesn't drive like a suburban or some other big SUV while it isn't compact it's got a third row it's the it's kind of that just right size for a family or for somebody who moves a lot of people you got the third row when you need it even though it's not as big as other SUVs that's kind of its benefit as well it's just right on its size okay number nine is the resale value now Toyotas are legendary for their resale value but this is no exception in fact so much so this is the fifth year fifth or sixth this came out in 2014 as this body style it was mildly updated for the 2019 year and yet sales continue to go up every year and the reason is because people are looking for that quality and that dependability which Toyota's reputation still stands strong their cars just last longer they're built to last okay number eight is there is a lot of storage there is cup holder spots there's a slot at the dash this center console is pretty big try to get in here real quick the back area is no exception as well. The back area has lots of storage, cup holders, places to put your stuff. This SUV was designed to be lived in. It's got lots of storage. So number seven is the ride quality. The suspension is not sporty. It drives smooth and easy. I would describe it as almost Lexus-like. It's designed for somebody who's just looking for a comfortable, easy driving SUV that's what this is it's also what it's trying to be it's not pretending to be something else which i think some of these suvs are just like this but they're trying to be sporty or off-road and really they're just pretending this knows what it is it's a family suv for city drivers okay number six while i just mentioned that it's a easy riding suv i like that it sits up a little taller i would say that the ride height for a seated seating position it was a little higher than some of the other CUVs or SUVs of this size where you kind of feel like you're just in a tall car. This has a little bit of ground clearance. It's actually an SUV, uh, even though it's not, you know, super off-road capable or something. It has a good ride height. That was something I really liked about it. Okay, number five is the cargo space. The seats flip up, flip down. It's got that third row, but when you flip it down, you have so much storage space. I, you know, unless you're moving, using it as a work truck, I can't imagine you're gonna need more than what that trunk offers with the third row down. It's a lot of cargo space. Okay, number four, the rear passengers are not an afterthought. So, especially the middle seats, you get bucket seats. They're comfortable, they're big. They're designed to fit an adult comfortably. Now, the third row is quite a bit smaller. I'll talk about that in the gripes. But that's okay if you're only pulling around some small kids. Uh, again, this just right styling, you got some trade-offs. And one of the 
things that make this easier to drive is it's a little bit smaller than a full full size SUV but as a result that third row is just a little bit smaller but in the in general the back is not an afterthought okay number three I really like this this thing is pretty close to self-driving on the highway so number three is gonna be this is a highway cruiser it was meant for a road trip uh, maybe you're going from Chicago all the way to Wally World this thing would eat up the miles with no problem. It has a lane departure assist, which I'll try to show you. It's fantastic. It also has uh, the distance control where when you set it on cruise, you can control your distance. And outside of steering, does everything for you. It'll slow down with the car in front of you to, a, uh, to the point where it almost feels like it's driving itself. Uh, excellent tool for highway driving the miles just disappear in this SUV. Really comfortable, great highway road trip SUV. Okay, number two is the engine, the V6, which I do not recommend going with the four cylinder, go with the V6. 295 horsepower, 263 pound-feet of torque. It feels like it. It does not feel aggressive at all, and yet the power is always there when you need it. The transmission it's mated to is smooth, you really don't even notice the engine. It just goes when you need it to, it's quiet, it drives well, but you never feel like you don't have enough power to merge or to pull out or something like that. So I would describe the engine as quietly, confidently powerful, but not aggressive. Okay, and then the number one thing you need to know about this is its safety equipment. So for instance, you've got your seatbelt monitor for all five seats in the back, Right here, it shows you who's got their seatbelt on, who doesn't, all the kids get in the car, you're waiting to go, who's got their seatbelt, who doesn't, it'll show you. It's also got the uh, lane departure assist, so the steering wheel will actually steer you back in your lane. It beeps at you when you're going out of your lane, really at any speed. Uh, it's also got the uh, crash avoidance system, which will brake hard when a car in front of you is braking. That can be uh, adjusted, especially on highway cruising, which I mentioned earlier. And then it's also got the blind spot monitoring on both windows or both mirrors, excuse me. And so overall, there's there's some other safety features. It's got tons of airbags. It's crash rating is pretty good. I'm not a safety expert on vehicles, but I will tell you driving this car, it felt safe. It felt like the features were usable. Almost all of them are standard on all trim levels. Okay, so that's the list. Let me know what I missed or what you think. Those are just my take for driving this for a little while. Top 10 things you needed to know. Okay, as usual, I've got to give you some gripes. I just mentioned the safety being one of the things you need to know, but I will tell you, it takes some getting used to. In fact, I would describe it as a nanny. Every time I did something wrong, it kind of slapped me on the wrist a little bit. You know, changing lanes when there's no one around, you don't use your blinker it thinks that you're swerving and it's gonna beep at you. So you really forces you to make a habit out of using your blinker. That overall is a good thing, but to be honest, I found it kind of annoying. Okay, the number two gripe, I mentioned it already. The third row, it's kind of small. Uh, while it's fine for smaller kids or for a, a, you know, a short trip, I'm not sure that it isn't too small, especially if you have any kids over, you know, seven, eight years old. Okay, third gripe, the navigation system is so terrible, I would describe it as unusable. Don't even mess with it, just use your phone. And on top of that, it doesn't have CarPlay or Google, uh, whatever the Google CarPlay version is called. Maybe if I owned it and had it for a longer period of time, I would have been able to figure it out. But frankly, it just wasn't very user-friendly. I didn't like it in Google Maps or Waze. It's just way better. That's my quick review. I hope you enjoyed this video. Click that like button for me. I appreciate it and we'll see you next time. In 2020, there's gonna be an all new Highlander coming out, completely redesigned. So look for that and see what it looks like. 10 things you need to know about this Toyota Handler. Whew. Ah, so close.